Welcome to my video for the 2014 AP Calculus AB examination. This is free response question number five. Notice that uh, we're given a table here of values. It says the twice differentiable functions f and g are defined for all real numbers x. The values of f, f prime, g, and g prime for various values of x are given in the table above. And notice the interval that we're looking at in the table is from negative two up to positive three inclusive. Part A, find the x coordinate of each relative minimum of f on the interval negative two to three. Justify your answer. So I'm gonna slide this up to cover up g and g prime, which we don't need to do right now. So, uh, relative minimum of f. So we're gonna take a quick sketch of the graph here. So f is positive everywhere, okay? It goes from uh, 12 to eight to two, and then back up to seven. And here's what the derivative tells us. It tells us, hey, the derivative is a negative here, and then comes up to zero, and then goes back down to being negative. And so that means uh, at negative one here, this is a plateau. So if I were to draw this, I would have a negative slope going to a slope of zero, and then going back down negative, and this being my plateau here, right where x is negative one. And then we have a negative slope going to zero, and then going up to be a positive slope, that describes the local minimum. So negative slope down to zero, and then positive slope. So the local minimum here is gonna be where x equals positive one. So there's, there's the rough scratch, uh, sketch of my graph for f from negative two to positive three roughly. And let's answer the question here, so x equals 1 because the derivative is 0 at 0 with a sign change of negative to positive as we transition through x equals 1 from left to right. Okay? So that's describing, hey, the slope is negative here, positive there. Okay, that covers question A. Okay, question B. Explain why there must be a value c in the interval negative one to one, such that the derivative of c is equal to zero. Well, we should probably go back to the last one here. Grab my graph. So here's our sketch of the plateau that we see for function f at uh, negative one, and then the local minimum here. Well, notice when we have a plateau where it's negative on the left and negative on the right, that means it's going to be concave up on the left and concave down on the right. So wherever there's a plateau, that's also a point where the second derivative has to be zero. There has to be a change of concavity. And notice as we go from uh, concave down here, and then we get to our local minimum, well, at the local minimum, this whole region of the graph is concave up, so the second derivative is going to be positive. So somewhere in this region here from negative one to positive one, there we go from concave down to concave up, so there must be a change of concavity. So here's what I wrote, oops. Number one, in x equals negative one, that function has a plateau where the second derivative is, or the first derivative is negative on both sides, meaning that just to the right side here, over in this region, f of x has to be concave down. And then the second point, at x equals positive one over here, this is the local minimum for the reasons we said in part A, right? Meaning at this point, f has to be concave up. And since f of x is given to us as a differentiable function over the entire interval from negative two to positive three, the second derivative must be equal to zero with a sign change somewhere in here from negative one to one. Okay. So that concludes part B. Notice very little computation here. This is all about understanding what these things mean. Part C. Function h is defined by h of x is equal to the natural log of f of x 
find h prime of 3 and show the computations that lead to your answer. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and cover up function g and g prime here. We don't need this. And so h is the natural log of f. So we were asked to find h prime of 3. Well, first thing, hey, the derivative of h, since this is a composite function, right, is going to be the derivative of the argument for the natural log, which is f prime of x, right, divided by the argument, which is f. So the argument is f, so that means the derivative of the natural log of x, f, is the derivative of f divided by f. Okay, so that means h prime of 3, specifically, is going to be equal to the derivative of f at 3 divided by, the deriv or divided by f at 3. So looking in the table, f prime of 3, the derivative of f of 3 is 1 half, so I replace that or substitute it with 1 half, f of 3 is 7. And 1 half divided by 7 is, in fact, 1 over 14. So there's our final answer. And the computations are shown here. Now that should conclude Part C. Okay, so Part D says the integral of f prime of g times g prime with respect to x from negative 2 to 3. We need to evaluate that. Well, notice this guy right here, f prime of g times g prime of x. That brings me to, like, that's a form of the chain rule. And so if I said, hey, if I've got f of g of x, so I've got a composite function here. Okay, whoops, there should be another parentheses there. Here we go. So if I have f of g of x, and I take the derivative of that with respect to x, that's going to give me f prime of g of x times g prime of x, which is this guy right here. So what does that mean for me? That means that the integral of this guy where it says, hey, so this is it, the chain rule. So the integral of f prime of g of x times g prime with respect to t is f of g of x. Okay? So that means the integral that we're given right here is f of g evaluated from negative 3 to 2. So that means, okay, that's going to be f of, that should be negative 3 minus, okay, f of g of negative 3. Oh, this is horribly in error. So let's see, back to marker mode, f of g of negative 3 minus f of g of, no. Oh, I wrote this all backwards. Holy crap. Okay, so let's try this again. I'm going to pause. Okay, I had a typo in my pre-prepared guys there. So basically, let's back up and say, look, the integral of f prime of g times g prime with respect to some variable t is equal to f of g of x. So that means this integral right here is, when we evaluate it, that's going to be f of g of 3 minus f of g of negative 2. So, here we go. g of 3, so here's 3 here, g of 3 is is 1, so we're going to put 1 into function f. So, f of 1 is this value right here, too. So that's where we get this guy. So this is f of g of 3, which is f of 1, is 2. And then we're going to minus f of g of negative 2. Okay. Well, g of negative 2 is this guy that's 2 right here. So we're going to take f of that. Oops. g of negative 2. That was g prime. g of negative 2 is negative 1. So we're going to take f of negative 1. f of negative 1 is going to be 8. And so that gives me 8 there. So g of negative 2 is f of negative 1. And f of negative 1 is... 8. So 2 minus 8. Final answer, negative 6. All right, that concludes uh, question number 5 on the 2014 free response. I hope you got something about this video. Sorry about jacking up uh, the part D on the question here. Have a good one.